Yo, what's going on everybody? Today I had a chance to sit down with Sid Gidabudai, who is currently an unsigned athlete, but he's running with Roots Running Project in Boulder, Colorado. Sid's got a really long resume. He's been a national championship at the Division II level seven times, and he was an All-American 16 times. Recently, he placed third at the US ATF 5K National Championships in New York. And last weekend, he came in ninth at the Houston Half Marathon at a time of 61.09, which was a PR for him, and good enough to put him at 16th best American half marathon performance of all time. I was really glad to finally get a chance to meet Sid and talk to him because I've been following his career for a little while now, and I hope you guys enjoy this conversation with Sid Gidibudai. All right, yo, what's going on, everybody? Today, we've got Sid Gidibudai here recently having finished the Houston Half Marathon coming in and 16th, I think the 16th best American Half Marathon time. And uh, coming in in a PR, a big PR, I think, for him over the weekend. And Sid, congratulations on the finish and on the effort. And thanks for taking time to speak with me today. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited. One of the things that I wanted to talk about um, kind of at the outset was you're running with Roots over in Boulder. Mm -hmm. And uh, the group is, is growing uh, quite a bit. And you guys have been seeing quite a bit of success, not only just yourself, but also some of your teammates too. So congratulations to you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think, uh, it's, it's been, a it's been like building pretty quickly, you know, mm -hmm. I think the addition of Sid Vaughn and, uh, and Parker Stinson recently has mm -hmm. been like, you know, I didn't know it was happening a, a month ago, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I have no disputes with those additions because they're, they're amazing runners and they're going to be great training partners. And, uh, mm -hmm. I'll just be excited to, you know, cheer cheer them on as they like reach for their goals yeah. very cool and um as far as those other runners like parker stinson is a Saucony guy and then you've got frank who's running with ultra and then you've got uh noah running for solomon are you the only are you're still currently don't have like a title shoe sponsor right now uh no no i'm i'm not sponsored and mm -hmm. so i'd say on on the roots team they're mm -hmm are more unsponsored athletes okay. than sponsored athletes, honestly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's kind of, I think it benefits us to be able to like reach out to any shoe sponsor, you know, didn't, mm -hmm. we don't really, we're not tied to one group sponsor as a team. And so, yeah, it allows people to go to ultra Solomon, Saucony, mm -hmm. you know, wherever it may be. So, yeah. Yeah. Now I remember, I mean, I first kind of like learned about you through your time at Tin Man. And then, uh, of course, that's an, an Adidas squad. And then I remember seeing some interviews of you after New York where I did get to see you on the course. But uh, you were talking about how you were kind of experimenting now uh, with some of the other brands and some of the other shoes. Uh, I think for the USATF 5K Championships, which was in New York, um, mm -hmm. that that day you wore the Vaporfly. Next percents? Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. All right. And you had a really great day out there. I saw you on the course. I was able to get some footage and uh, I tried to keep up with you elite runners and I ran as hard as I could. And I made, I think maybe 200 meters before I was like, these guys are just way too fast. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I've been, uh, I've been trying them out. And so I've been, um, you know, I can't say that I have like a preference mm -hmm. just yet. Obviously mm -hmm. I, maybe I have preferences in terms of like, colors and how they, sure. they look but i think that at this point like all the brands are, are catching up you know mm -hmm. and so i'm starting to think that a super shoe is a super shoe and if some brands aren't quite caught up like th they'll be caught up in the next year yeah i mean and i i agree too i mean it's not like it's like it's not 2018 anymore you know so it's like everyone's got some real firepower mm -hmm. but that being said like mentioned that you've got a whole bunch of different brands represented just on your team. Have they been like, Hey, you said you got to try these new, I got these new ultra vanish. You got to try them. Or it's like, you got to try this like endorphin pro plus it's amazing. Like, are they giving you any pressure to try them out or tell me about any of that? Uh, no, actually no pressure. <laughs> I, uh, which is, it's kind of nice, you know, cause okay. they, they understand that like yeah. shoe sponsorships and mm -hmm. like, what I'll like is, is going to be very different and mm -hmm. it's going to come about very differently than, than for them. Um, mm -hmm. I am curious about, yeah, some of the kind of 
you know, less popular super shoes. I am mm-hmm. curious about the Solomon shoes because mm-hmm. I haven't really held them yet. I, I've mm-hmm. seen them on uh, on Noah's feet uh, mm-hmm. and they've just been interesting. And so part of them not like pushing that on me is also because they're they're so new that you know, it was hard enough for them to get a pair mm-hmm. on their yeah. feet. And so it would be, it'd be hard for them to get a pair on my feet, <laughs> you know, who's an unsponsored person. So Sure. But none of you guys are the same size. You can't just be like, Hey, after practice, let me, uh, let me hop in those for a little bit. Yeah. Well, actually I, I did, um, you know, in, I did slip my foot into Frank's, okay. uh, super shoes. I, yeah. I don't know if they've released them yet. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say any names or anything like that of the yeah. shoe, but, uh, they felt nice. Um, He's like, I think a size and a half smaller than me, but okay. so I really, I really jammed my foot in there and, and yeah. walked in the hotel room after our race on Sunday. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I'd say that's my only experience with, uh, a teammate's, uh, shoe. Okay. Yeah. yeah Cause I mean, um, I think I've seen, uh, if it's the shoe that I think it is, I saw it at the TRE, uh, in December in, in Austin but they had it like in a glass case. So it's like, you couldn't pick it up. You couldn't like, t- well, at least they didn't, no one let me pick it up and touch it or anything like that. But I think that the ultra shoe had a good day because Frank had an amazing day. And also Cal Neff who paced uh, Kira D'Amato, I think was wearing them as well. I think he was wearing the same shoes as well. So I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm, 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 I haven't tried them, but I'm like, you know, I wanted to try them before and now I'm like, Oh, well the shoe can deliver. So yeah, I'll try it. Exactly. No, I mean, I, I think that uh, as a supporter of Frank's and even <laughs> Noah's, you know, I think if yeah. you get the chance to to try out those shoes, definitely do because, yeah. um, you know, especially those two brands, uh, you know, me not really being a, a sponsored athlete, mm-hmm. I, I'm still like, I'm a, I'm a little bit more interested in, in those shoes and just how they'll do in the market because, yeah, mm-hmm. they're coming from like a trail background and uh, it seems like they're already delivering. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's kind of cool that like, this whole super shoe talk is kind of bringing other people and other brands into the fight, you know? So, yeah. 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 Definitely very cool. And I, th- I, th- I just think it's going to be a real fun year for, for racing from the shoe perspective, but also I think just from, you know, from a racing calendar, just aside, shoes aside, I think it's going to be a great year um, coming up for you. I think, is this going to be your longest race this last weekend distance wise for the year? Uh, yeah, I'd say, I mean, mm-hmm. certainly for the first half of the year or mm-hmm. until August or September, um, mm-hmm. I'd like to get back to the track. Um, sure. you know, the, the marathon is enticing when, mm-hmm. when I see people like Frank, uh, Maggie and my, and my other teammate Luke mm-hmm. have like a great time doing it, but mm-hmm. I, I'd really like to, you know, see how fast my legs can spin on the track for a few more years. And so, yeah, I'll be doing 5Ks, 10Ks, and mm-hmm. um, hopefully like the mile distance a couple times just to see if I can't break four minutes in the mile. Just, okay. you know, give it, um, you know, I, I don't want to get to the end of my career and, uh, you know, realize that I, I, I didn't put in a good enough effort to try and break four minutes. So, yeah. So, but like is four, I mean, that's, I mean, that seems surprising to me. I mean, I'm thinking you're, a, you ran 13, like 53 in no in new york mm-hmm. right so like that's over a 5k i mean mm-hmm. how far are you from being a sub four miler uh i've run 401 yeah um, so i mean you, so you just, yeah i mean it's just a matter of the right day right yeah exactly no <laughs> and, and i think like I've, I've only given it two you know very solid and very honest efforts and i've run okay. 401 both times so okay um, you know yeah it's all about just it's a numbers game right it's like sure I should race the mile more often and mm-hmm. maybe I'll run 402, 403 a couple of times, but I think okay. that there's a chance that I break four as well. Okay. So then you think you'll be getting into some mile events this year then? Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly. Okay. And then uh, focusing though mainly on the, if the 5k or the 10k is something you're looking at this year or both? Yeah, I, I'd say both. It's been, I mean, this year is a special year because mm-hmm. the 10k U.S. championships will be a month before the the shorter distances, 5K and below. And okay. so um, it's like a good chance, yeah, it, uh, I'll be able to race the 10K in, in May as long as I qualify beforehand mm-hmm. um, and then have a month to recover and then also do the 5K. And so, um, you know, the, the goal is to be as close to making a world championship team as possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I would I would be happy if I made either one, you know. Sure. 
<laughs> yeah, very, very cool. Um, before we get too far into it, though, you know, I don't think I've seen. I mean, I saw a brief interview um, after of you after the five k uh, the five k championships in New York, but I don't think I've seen any uh, interviews of you after Houston. So, do you want to give us a little bit of a kind of a race recap? Can you break it down for us? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so, I mean, I guess you know, maybe as a bit of a background, I think mm-hmm. like this was the the Houston half was kind of like the culmination of our base building of our okay. track season prep, like our strength mm-hmm. work. And so, uh, I was, I was so excited to, to line up and like just the whole week before, I think like I was just jittery every day, really excited to get on okay. the line. Um, but yeah, once, once the gun went off, you know, I, I kind of used that like nervous energy in, in a sense to like put myself in the front and, and kind of, try to dictate the race as much as I could, you know, there, Mm -hmm. there were those elite Kenyans and Ethiopian runners that were, you know, that were definitely the the fittest guys of the field, but it just felt nice to put myself in that top pack and be, you know, in the top five for most of the race Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you know, make my surges here and there and, and feel like I was really part of the race. And so, uh, we got out and, got out a little bit slow because we were expecting high winds. We were, mm-hmm. we were told that it was going to be a windy day over and over. And so right. the first 5k was a little slow for even the, you know, the, the American field. And so the, the, the elite international athletes were just hanging out. And so okay. we started to quaint, you know, we started to ramp it up from 5k on to about 10 mile. And, and I was, uh, I had kind of, put in too many moves and okay. kind of used up my energy uh, from then. And so I started to fall off over the last like two and a half miles or so. Mm-hmm. And, but I was far enough in the race to where I could, you know, do a little damage control and, and hold on for, a, you know, a huge PR. It was mm-hmm. about um, 83 seconds off of my half marathon PR mm-hmm. and, um, you know, puts me in a, in a top 20 position um, in the U S all time. And so, uh, you know, in, in terms of like the goals that I had in the race, you know, I had maybe some slightly more glamorous goals, like sub 61, you know, mm-hmm. breaking a barrier. But, uh, you know, in no way could I say it was a bad day. I think it was, a, you know, an, an a, a day and maybe sub 61 would have been the A plus day. So. Yeah, I mean, like a PR day is not something that you get every time you go out there. So, I mean, like anytime you you've done better than you've ever done. I mean, I feel like that's. Yeah, you know, that in and of itself is something you're proud of. But then to put yourself on that top twenty list, I think is pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I I didn't even think about it beforehand. And um, you know, I think I I posted sixteenth, and um, that's kind of me, my own research. Uh, you know, okay. I think trying to be my own statistician. You know, okay. um, so it it could be it could be a slightly better. It could be you know slightly further back, maybe seventeenth mm-hmm. or eighteenth, but um yeah no I, I didn't really think about it during the race and then once i was done i was like wow that was a, a very good performance by me and i felt like it was a time that not many americans had hit so i yeah i did my research <laughs> yeah incredible um and so you said that this was kind of like the the culmination of like the base building for the track season so then like how much do you think like room is there on top of that for you on that 6109? Like, let's say you wanted to go after a really fast, just half marathon time and really hammer that. Like, was this a relatively specific to half marathon training or was this like, you know, you guys are just training through and it's like, oh, I happened to hit a 6109. Good for me. Yeah. Well, so I, I would say it's, um, you know, in my current fitness, like, mm-hmm. I would say it's, it's about as, as good as I'm going to do currently, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that like, there's a lot to be, you know, there's a lot more work to be done because I've been with roots running for five months now. Mm -hmm. And so I could certainly work with the system quite a bit longer. Mm -hmm. Um, and also I think, you know, just to, just to also like kind of hammer down that, you know, this was a, a definitely a, like, as good as I could do is that like, I think that a lot of base building for the track season is, is definitely based around the half marathon, you know, it's right around that threshold effort that. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, threshold can be anywhere depending on who you talk to between 10 mile pace and half marathon pace. And so I did a lot of, you know, work at that pace. And, um, and so I feel like I was like prepped and ready for exactly that race. And now, now I'll be ready to kind of sharpen up and, and build off of that strength and hopefully get faster for those shorter distances. Very cool. I mean, I think for, for threshold, you know, I think it depends on who you are. If you're a, a Sydney G- Gidibudai, then it's a half marathon pace. If you're a Kofuzi, there's more like a 10 K pace. So, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. cause that's about how long it takes me to run the 10 K. So, you know, I mean, I think it, it's all relative, but um, yeah. do you think all that, I mean, with, with roots running with your coach now, um, you're doing a lot. So like that, can you tell me a little bit about more about like what the kind of philosophy is for the training? Is it a lot of threshold work, at least for this base building phase? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's definitely uh, a coach V Hill based system. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it, it is a lot of uh, like tempo sessions and, mm-hmm. and strength sessions rather than like those fast reps on the track. And so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it was perfect for the last few months because we're, we're doing a lot of, we would do like fart licks and mm-hmm. then like a strength session. And that could have been a, like a long run with different, you know, different paces within mm-hmm. that long run or uh, a much more specified workout where we did broken up tempos, like three miles on half a mile off three mm-hmm. miles on, you know, uh, where we were hitting like, you know, very solid and, and quick paces. And so, um, you know, definitely a lot of miles and like a lot of quality, but uh, mm-hmm. we're not just like ripping 200s or 300s right. on the track all the time. So. Now, I've heard you mention in in some other interviews that you like doing a lot of longer runs, longer efforts with uh, at that threshold pace. That's kind of a place that you like to be at. Mm-hmm. Is that, I mean, and that, do you think that comes because, because you were at Adam State in the V-Hill system or like you did well at Adam State because that's the kind of work that you like doing. Does that question make sense? Yeah, yeah, no, certainly. I, I'd say it's, um, I'd have to take the middle ground and say it's a bit of both, but mm-hmm. I think certainly uh, I am like a strength based runner. Like I, I don't have a ton of leg speed, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, I have good leg speed for a half marathon or maybe a 10 K runner, but not naturally gifted on the track as much. Um, okay. And so, yeah, I, I think that like my, physiology just benefits from like the longer steady stuff. Um, mm-hmm. and that like, that allows me to bring out some of that speed sometimes, but yeah, certainly I, I think that I thrive because of that system. Um, and then I made a, a, a fairly quick transition, uh, from Tin Man to Roots mm-hmm. because I had done something similar, you know, mm-hmm. for about for five years at Adam. So, yeah. Yeah. And so like, once you got there, was it like, oh yeah, this is what I like. Like it was, it was it really clear right away that like, yeah, this is good. like, can you tell like looking at the plans? I don't know how far ahead you get your work, but mm-hmm. like, could you tell like, yeah, yeah, this, I get, I know this, is this familiar? Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think like, um, at first I, you know, the intensity of those like strength sessions was maybe a little harder than I was used to over mm-hmm. the the couple years before roots with, with 10 man, I think mm-hmm. with 10 man, it was a much more track focused group. And so we mm-hmm. did do our strength sessions were a little bit more tame, but our track sessions were, you know, fairly hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but after I felt like I was getting into shape, like after a month or two. And so it felt nice and it felt like my body was just like taking it in and like, I wasn't having too many issues with it. Like I wasn't, getting injured. I wasn't feeling Mm -hmm. run down or anything like that. And so, um, I just, yeah, I just kind of learned how to trust it. And, um, you know, another thing I did was just kind of also just, you know, put my head down and and realize that like Frank is, is the guy that like I looked up to the most before I came into the roots running. And Mm -hmm. I was just like, if it works for him, like, you know, it'll work for me because we have very similar goals. And so, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And then you've, and you've been doing a lot of the marathon workouts with Frank, I understand. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've done probably on some of those days he'll do, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'd probably do two thirds or three quarters of what he did. Okay. Um, or he may do it slightly slower and I, and I could chase him. Uh, I could start behind him and chase him. And so okay. we, 
we were good workout partners um, mm-hmm. for most of the, the last five months, but over the, the last month or so, he's had to kind of specify a little bit more for the ha- for yeah. the mar- the full marathon and I've had to split ways a bit. So. All right. All right. So let me, let me ask you this. I see you got your Strava shirt on for today mm-hmm. and I understand you're still working there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am. So like what, what question do you think you probably get more? Like, do you either get asked more like, when are you going to start training for a marathon or do you get more questions about like, how do I do this on Strava? Huh. Like in a mean? social I, situation, like not at work, but like in a social yeah. situation. Cause I feel like those are the two main things that everyone always wants to ask you about. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I, I don't want to ask you about Strava. I mean, I have some <laughs> Strava questions, but I'm not going to ask, I'm not going to make you be the suggestion box, but yeah. you know, I'm, I, when I see you run, I'm like, I don't know, this guy's going to be a really great marathoner. <laughs> yeah. I I'd say that I've been told that I was going to be a good marathoner from, mm-hmm. you know, from when I was in college, my college okay. coach's mm-hmm. dream is for me to run a marathon I'm sure um Mm -hmm. and so you know right now I think the marathon question has come about more but I've only been working at Strava for eight months now and so (laughs) yeah yeah. so I'm sure you know more of those questions will come up because they have come up before and sure uh, it's been nice to kind of to be able to know that because Usually I can, I, I have the app uploaded on my phone as well. So it's like, I'm gonna, <laughs> it's easy for me to pull it up and just like figure out the issue there. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Um, so like, I, I mean, just basically, and you live in Boulder, which I feel like it's just a city full of like professional athletes, triathletes, skiers, like all sorts of like outdoor activity, endurance sports. So mm-hmm. like everywhere you go, you must just be like, Hey, you know what Strava should do? This is what they should really do. Like, does that happen to you? Like everywhere you go? Yeah. Oh, um, (laughs) I would say like, I, I actually, I did another, I did an interview with sweat elite a few months ago and and he had a suggestion and, um, I, I forgot what it was, but I, I, you know, he, (laughs) I, I just like made note of that and I was like, okay, there's like one thing to do. And, um, I, my, my old roommate, uh, has, has a girlfriend that suggested something that Mm -hmm. has actually come into Strava since she suggested it. And, not mm-hmm. not through me or her, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it was it was kind of it's kind of cool because I get to share that with her and be like, oh, they, they actually added your idea, like they were thinking about it while you were thinking about it, and so, um, you know, I'll, I'll get little suggestions here and there, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, for the most part, I it's it, it's fun and and like I like to I like having that like fun fact uh, for myself because um, you know, me and Strava or me and the me and Frank are like the kind of the you know maybe the the athletes that people think about when like right. when they think about like working athletes and and the uh, athletes that are doing pretty well so yeah, yeah. awesome well I won't, I won't add to your suggestion list or your to-do list <laughs> but I do want to talk <laughs> about your Strava a little bit because I see you do post on there pretty actively mm-hmm. um the main thing that I like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at is like the shoes. Cause you know, my gear list is pretty long cause I test a lot of different shoes and your gear list, I think is a bit of a surprise. So like I was taking mm-hmm. a look at your shoes you got several different models of Diodoros mm-hmm. and you got the SL 20.2, which makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a Puma Magnify. Mm-hmm. Is that just like a sampling of what you've got in the closet? Are there any others in the rotation that you just, you know, like, I forget it. I, I forgot to like upload that or is, is that it? That's the rotation. Yeah. Well, so I guess I, I've only been logging in my gear for, uh, I mean, like, you know, consistently for the last like four months. And okay. so, so mm-hmm. those are the shoes that I've had like in my closet um, mm-hmm. for the last four months. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I think like I should have been doing it sooner because then I could have kept track of like what shoes I really liked and what shoes mm-hmm. I didn't. Um, there are shoes that like jump out at me, but mm-hmm. sometimes I'm like on running warehouse and I'm like, Oh, what shoe should I buy now? And, um, you know, sometimes I kind of want like an old and reliable shoe and I can't really think of them. And so if, if mm-hmm. I did have that database from years back, like I could have, but so yeah, I, I will try to keep, you know, I, I guess like uploading my runs with the, the gear <laughs> attached to them more more frequently just so that, you know, 
so that people could follow along and, and hopefully I can, I can just choose one of those brands <laughs> or right. I, I get to yeah. just wear one of those brands soon enough. And, uh, it can give an insight to like what, you know, what shoes I'd be using of that brand. And I'd be mm-hmm. able to like speak about what, what shoes I use for which days. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's like a great tool for, um, for a shoe company that, that may sponsor me, you know, um, yeah. I think that mm-hmm. it's, it's a good way to like give that insight and to be like, Oh, for tempo days, I use this shoe and for long run days, I use this shoe. And so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that would be really helpful. And, uh, you know, I mean, people that me that are stalking people on Strava would love to be able to see that information too. <laughs> yeah. Um, for the half marathon, what did you go with? Uh, I went with the Vaporfly, the, the next okay. percent too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The same ones you uh, wore in New York. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. And so I had, uh, I ran the USA half marathon championships, uh, mm-hmm. about five weeks ago or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wore the a six at a speed mm-hmm. sky, yeah. I think. Yeah, one of my um, favorites. yeah. And they were nice. You know, I, I, I like, I didn't have the race that I wanted, but mm-hmm. it wasn't due to the, to the shoes at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that they're, you know, a competitive shoe and, mm-hmm. uh, and so, but I think that, you know, choosing the shoe of last weekend, I was like, you know, I like the, the, the clean white look of the, mm-hmm, the Nikes yeah. right now. So, yeah. um, you know, um, it was kind of, it was purely like an aesthetic choice. And, oh, really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, speaking of like aesthetic choices, or maybe this is more of a practical choice too. I noticed, you know, for the longest time and you're wearing your glasses now and I've been seeing you racing in glasses, but I think in New York and in Houston, no glasses. You went with contacts though, right? Uh, yeah. Contacts. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm severely r- blind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, s- same here. Same here. And I do the same thing. Um, how's that been going? It's, it's been going well. I, I, I mm-hmm. toyed with it in, in college, mm-hmm. uh, here and there, like in college, I mostly ran with glasses, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm just finding that for some of these like longer races, I don't want to have to deal with like, you know, pushing up my glasses every, sure. every couple of minutes. And so, yeah. um, for the roads, I'll, I'll certainly be running with contacts. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, maybe on the track, I'll, I'll, I'll bring the glasses back for, you know, the, the shorter stuff like the 5k and the 1500 or something like that, because yeah, it is a classic look and yeah. not many people, uh, sport that look. And so, uh, it's kind of, it's something that like, I kind of became known for, uh, okay. and so I don't want to like let it just fade away. <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, I I can't imagine trying to race a, a fast fifteen hundred with my glasses on. I mean, but like if you if you can do it, man, I think it, I think it definitely is uh, something that stands out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll have one, I have one more one last Strava question for you. So mm-hmm. as I was looking at your Strava. You know, um, it had, I think your time from the Michigan half marathon, like the pro, uh, half marathon as your best, uh, half marathon time. So I think you need to update that, Mm -hmm. but it also scrolling down a little bit further. Um, it had Strava estimating your half Mm -hmm. marathon. Have you seen that? Do you know what Strava estimates your half marathon time as? Yeah. I think it's 60, 20. Yeah. 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 So what do you, I mean, what do you think? What do you think about that? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think that I'm, I'm gonna, you know, just have to pin that with like bad GPS because okay, uh, okay, okay. I, I remember looking down at, at 20 K mm-hmm. and I looked down and I, and it was about spot on in terms okay. of the mileage. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think as I got into the city and between the buildings, you okay, can see okay. that my last point two was at three thirteen pace. And so, okay. <laughs> so I think that like that, um, Mm-hmm. you know, that GPS error, like accounted, you know, made for that, like, I guess, total error. So, um, okay. All right. <laughs> but one day, one day. I'll All right. Very cool. That Very mind. cool. That I mean, when I saw that, I'm like, I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. And I'm just like, I got to see what he says about that. So I, yeah. I think it's a very humble move of you to be like, I'm not sure the data might be off on that one by a little bit and not Strava's <laughs> fault, just GPS. No. Yeah, just GPS. Yeah, I got. I get, actually, that's something that I have to let people know that you know, it, it, a lot of the times it's it's the GPS is issue, not Strava's issue. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's just going to yeah. save you like fifty emails next week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, 
Going back to the race, um, so like you said, you were there, and there were the some of the international uh, elite that were there. Um, but you guys were all, I mean, from the coverage that I saw of the race, it seemed like you guys were bunched up for a very long time together. Mm-hmm. Is it is it chatty when when it's like that? No, no, I, yeah. I couldn't say it's chatty. It's a it's a pretty <laughs> uh, it's pretty quiet. You know, mm-hmm. I think that like it's it, you feel out of place if you say something. Cause okay. even like there are a couple times where, you know, you, you bump into people like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so sometimes I say, sorry. And, and it feels yeah. like I've broken the silence that oh. like shouldn't have been broken because okay. it's this, like this collective like focus of like, we're just kind of running as a pack and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we kind of like assimilate into this like unit, you know? Um, yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, but, but it is fun. You know, I think it's like, it's almost like, like meditative, you know, because you have to like, just like take in the run and take in the race and like you communicate with each other in just nonverbal ways by like taking the lead or, you know, or signaling with your hands, like saying like, you know, I'm moving over there or whatever. And so it's, it's really cool. Like, I, I think that it's like, especially since, you know, with some of the international athletes, there there would be a language barrier, but mm-hmm. you can you can easily communicate what you want or what you need, like by very simple gestures. Um, and so, I always enjoy that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, actually, it's kind of a funny story because uh, Frank had mentioned it, uh, but he said that in the marathon, since he's a hometown Houston mm-hmm. boy he was like waving to people that he knew because he was excited to be out in the, um, in the streets of Houston. Um, and one of, uh, one of his competitors was like, Hey, you have to focus. Like, Oh really? You know, like, yeah. You know, and I, and, and I think he, he meant that in the, in the best way possible, you know, yeah. I think yeah. that Frank was enjoying himself. Uh, yeah. but the, you know, his competitor was just like, you know, like, I think we, we do it like this and you have to like, Oh, you know use your energy to run and mm-hmm. um you know either way it worked out because they both ended up running pretty fast uh but it was just like a funny thought because it was like okay yeah there is this collective like you know focus that um that is needed and you know frank waving to to his friends out on, yeah. at houston was kind of taking away from the focus of his competitor and so um it was just like a i guess it's a kind of a funny coincidence uh that we're talking about this. <laughs> yeah. I mean that, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't have thought that. And then I wouldn't think that someone else would be like, I mean, I, I take it as that person was trying to be like, Hey, this is, yeah. Like you were saying, like, this is how we do it, you know, mm-hmm. and like trying to help them and be like, Hey, if you want to keep up and stay here until the end, you know, you got to kind of like, you know, fall in line a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess as like someone that, uh, I try to run my marathons hard, but you know, I like waving to people. I like trying to draw that energy from the crowd. Um, uh, I mean, I'm out there for so much longer than the, you guys are. And so like, I, I need other things to help keep me going, I guess. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. No, and then I, here, here's the other thing that surprised me so much about that, that you said it wasn't chatty is because Rory Linkletter was in, in the pack with you guys. Mm-hmm. And from all accounts, what I hear is that Rory is super chatty in the long run. So, I mean, maybe race day, it's a little <laughs> bit different, but, maybe None, yeah. nothing from him yeah no no nothing from him actually and <laughs> he i mean he was like a a, a silent killer because uh yeah, yeah. i didn't i don't think i saw him at all in the race yeah. but then he nipped me by he was a second ahead of me in the race and so he you know he did everything right <laughs> yeah i mean he, he caught you at the, he sniped you at the end i saw yeah, I, exactly. I was like i saw him i mean i knew the results before i watched the, the like the replay yeah. and then um I, I, I'm like, I'm seeing you come in and I'm like, Oh, there's Rory. He's going, for, he's yeah. getting that Canadian record. And so like, yeah. he's going after it. And then I was like, uh-huh. I was like, Oh, that's how it happened. I didn't realize it was so close to the finish. No. Yeah. Exactly. In front of you. Yeah. Yeah. And so like I got ahead and he, mm-hmm. and then I blew up a little bit and then mm-hmm. he was able to kind of use the energy of him breaking the Canadian record. You know, mm-hmm. I think you get, you get some a little extra energy when you're about to like, you know, hit something that special. Very cool. Very cool. 
Um, and then something else that I saw, you know, I saw like you guys posting, you know, on Instagram, your results from the weekend, both you posted your own results, but also you're proud of your team and how all your teammates were doing. And like looking in the comments, you know, some of the first people that I see are some of your former Tin Man teammates. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I saw on Strava that you recently went on a run with Drew Hunter. seems like there's no like bad blood, no, nothing like that in terms of, you know, former teammates, there's no rivalry or anything like that. No, no. Yeah. You know, I think it's, it's all the same. I, you know, I couldn't say that, you know, you know, I, I think obviously leaving was a, uh, this kind of a hard thing and it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's hard not to like leave and not feel like you're offending someone or not like, mm-hmm. or you're not hurting someone, but you know, I think, yeah, the, there's no bad blood at this point. And, and I feel like, you know, if I line up with them, I, I certainly want to beat them, but mm-hmm. I also want to beat everyone else, you know? Sure. And so, yeah. um, you know, I, I think like they, you know, they, they did a lot for me as a, as a team. And so it's mm-hmm. like, I have to appreciate that and appreciate them getting me to, you know, running as fast as I did with them. And mm-hmm. so, yeah. And, and yeah, it, it was great to just like catch up with, with Drew the other day. And, you know, I hope I get to do that quite a few more times with everyone on the team. Yeah. I mean, and it's like Boulder's, you know, not, not that big a town. And so I'm, I'm assuming that like you've probably seen each other out, you know, and you've, probably see everyone out at some point because you guys it's not like you guys are only running like four or five times a week you know so yeah it's actually kind of funny well so like with drew i did run into him like Mm -hmm. i drove to the park that we run at Mm -hmm. and he was stretching getting ready for his run so i was like oh can i join you and it just happened like that but it's it's weird because like yeah we do have so many groups here but there i mean there are people that i don't see for weeks at a time uh, mm-hmm. because they may work out on Wednesday and mm-hmm. Saturday while we work out on Tuesday and Friday. And so sometimes like those, like the workout locations don't match up because like everyone goes to roughly the same places to do the certain types of runs. Right. And so mm-hmm. like if on a Tuesday I'm working out, like they're doing their easy run at their, at the easy run place. And then the next day I go to the easy run place and they're at the workout place. And so it, it's weird. It, it just mm-hmm. ends up like, I, I don't see as many of like my, as the, of the other teams as you would think, but I, okay. it'd be nice if I, if I could, you know, just cause yeah. it's always nice to catch up and be like, Hey, are you guys doing like, how's your team doing? Like mm-hmm. all the typical questions, but yeah. 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 Uh, that's 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 amazing. I mean, I guess that makes a lot of sense. But I was just thought it was just kind of like one big giant summer camp over there in Boulder. Like I've never been <laughs> yeah. to Boulder, but that's just like the way I envision it. That place in my mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you should come out and visit if you ever have the chance. I think sure. it's it's an amazing place. Like right now, it's a little cold, but mm-hmm. it's not it's not the worst. You know, it's like maybe you have to wait out a day of of snow, mm-hmm. and then you get a a bright and sunny day the next day. So, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, one, one last area that I wanted to touch on before uh, we end for today is, you know, you're in Boulder and it's not only a great place for 5k runners, 10k runners, half marathoners, marathoners, but it's also a great place for people that are running trail races or, uh, trail ultras. Um, are you getting out on the trails at all? Or are you just basically staying on some of the, like, the dirt roads where it's, you know, hilly, but not quite as, you know, rugged as some of the mountain trails could be? Yeah. So I, I, you know, I couldn't say I'm a, I'm a trail runner <laughs> or mountain runner, uh, you know, uh, just because I think that, I mean, historically, like I, I stay on the dirt roads, like okay. the flat or, or kind of rolling dirt roads, but <laughs> nothing too windy. Um, and I'd say a lot of that is just because like, I'd say for staying healthy, you know, I don't want any kind of any accidents to happen, but also like, there's a bit of like ego involved to be honest. Um, okay. I think because like, you know, I think when I get out into the trails, you, you just can't run as fast on the trails, mm-hmm. like with the same effort, you know, like mm-hmm. eight minute pace on, on a flat dirt road is not the same as eight minute pace up a mountain. And, sure. uh, I really get into my head about, <laughs> you know, sometimes not being able to run a certain pace, <laughs> uh, in the trails or in the mountains. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I just love seeing those like nice round numbers. And so, yeah, yeah, I I find myself in town. Um, but trail running is, is something that's like fun to me. Like when I do do it, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, 
because it's that usually comes when it's like postseason and I'm going on a run just for pure enjoyment and not mm-hmm. for training. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I think that's when I find time to do trail running, but in terms of normal training, I, I stick to the, to the roads here. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, anything that else you wanted to add before we close out for today? Uh, you know, I think, no, not, not much. I, I guess we are, I mean, just as of today, we are putting out some, some, you know, merchandise some merch on, on the roots running website. Um, and so I think, you know, just a shout out to, to, to our team and, you know, supporting it. And so it's like, if, if people have a chance to, to visit, uh, roots running, I'm not sure the, the actual URL, but, uh, just rootsrunning.com, I think, uh, and, you know, check out the merch. Very cool. Well, I'll be sure to, um, find that and post a link for everyone to check it out. I'll be hitting it up too, to make sure that I can help support you guys. Cause I mean, you guys have, are building such an exciting team and, um, you know, I like, I like V Hill. Um, I'm trying to figure out this book a little bit, you know? Oh yeah. So, um, you know, I'm trying to I learn a little bit more back there. Oh, do you really? Awesome. Yeah, I'm so trying to figure right it out. But <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, you know, if I have questions, I'll hit you up. But, um, yeah. you know, I love what you guys are doing and, and hopefully that you guys have just really great success into the future. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate well, thanks it. so much, Sid. And, uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you racing to great success soon. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Sid, for taking the time out of your day to sit down with us and tell us more about yourself. I really enjoyed getting to finally talk to him in person myself. I've been following his career for a little while now. Also, I'll post links in the description to the Roots Running merch. By the way, Sid didn't mention it, probably because the guy is just so humble, but the merch is Sid-themed merch, so it's super awesome. You got to go check it out. I've already picked one up, so hopefully these will sell out super fast. Before I go for today, I do want to remind you guys about the charity runner of the week. This week it's Travis McCuller. He's going to be running the Chicago Marathon and raising money for the American Diabetes Association. I've put in $100 of my own money to help support Travis's cause. And so far, you guys have also donated 30 additional dollars to help Travis out. I love the way that we're supporting these charity runners of the week, guys. Thank you so much for joining me and helping these runners as they pursue their own goals while also doing some good for the communities where they live. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?